It's been a couple weeks now since I started working on the garden and the swales. And I've been lucky to have some helpers along the way. And the garden beds are complete. I'm going to show you that here real soon. And one swale is complete. I have one more swale to dig, which I'm going to start today. And um, I've actually planted two apple trees on the first swale already. And I have four more apple trees that are going to be delivered. They're some heirloom apple trees. So um, my goal here is to get the next swale dug and all my apple trees planted in the next two weeks here. So here you'll see I've got the pile of wood chips and the pile of compost and it's just really three ingredients to do this no-till garden. You're going to lay down a layer of cardboard right on top of the grass and then put down five to six inches of compost on top of that cardboard and then in between the beds I put the wood chips and there's also cardboard underneath the wood chips for the pathways because the point of the cardboard as far as I understand anyway is it uh, prevents weeds from coming through so you don't want to have weeds coming through your pathways either so put down the cardboard for the entire surface area so yeah I got all six rows here each row is about 30 feet, maybe two, two and a half feet wide. Here I need to add some, some kind of stones or something on the edge here to keep this from running off. It's not too bad, but I need to work on that a little bit. And then here's the first swale. So the swale is about six inches deep on this front edge and then probably about a foot at the back and then you want to have it as level as possible on the inside so the water doesn't flow from one side to the other and then on top of here I put wood chips as well at least for this first year and then I'm gonna plant um, some clover as a cover crop on top of the swale. It's a nitrogen fixer. It'll be really good for these apple trees. So yeah, these are the two. I've got two apple trees so far. These are both heirloom as well. I'll put a nitrogen fixer tree right here in between these. And then another apple tree down there on the end here.
So both of the swales are complete and all the trees are planted. I've got six heirloom apple trees and three nitrogen fixer trees, which are honey locust. So here's one of the honey locust trees. They're all just small saplings. And then I've got a small grape tree down here in between these two apple trees. And I've got three raspberry plants as well, spaced along through here. Down here I've got my orchard set up, kind of the order that's more ideal. Um, so I've got a honey locust on both ends, and then three apple trees in between. So in the future I might extend these swales and do that same order for every three apple trees they'd be surrounded by two nitrogen fixer trees and looking at the garden again in its completed phase I've got all the fencing up so down here we've got this chicken wire this is to keep out groundhogs and maybe mice or anything it's more just on the ground and then I've got this electrical tape, it's called poly tape, that I've connected with the yellow insulators to the U-posts. And I don't even have this electric electrified right now. Um, I might later if I really have a problem with the deer, but some people have said you can just put up the tape and um, they won't even go through it, but we'll see. I might have to reinforce this system a little bit, but I'm just gonna go with this for now. Uh, a lot of people say to put up a, a second layer of tape on the outside, like one more low one, like out here, all the way around. And that creates like this 3D barrier that they somehow just don't like to go through. Um, I can also electrify, electrify this tape and uh, that could help keep the deer out. I do have deer that come through the yard here um, pretty often. I mean, I don't see them if I'm out here, but they come out here at night, I know. And I, I've seen them in the daytime too. But um, all this is, you know, my first time and I'm testing things out. I don't want to... I don't want to go too crazy with the barriers unless I need to. So um, for now, this is my system. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty low cost. Pretty easy to set up. In the future, if I really get serious about the garden and maybe if I expand it even bigger, I'll put up like a, a solid fence, you know, big wood posts, eight feet tall or more, and then welded wire mesh all around it. But for now, I think this will work out. So finally, after about a month of work, I've finished the garden space. I've got a nice 30 by 30 garden space with six no-till garden rows and two swales about 45 feet long each. So that's six apple trees, and then I put in three nitrogen fixers. I've got a small grape tree and three raspberry bushes. So I'd say that's a pretty good start to my garden and the food forest. Now I've just got to plant my produce in the garden space and see how it goes this spring and summer. So um, yeah, this was uh, this video took a long time to make because I've been working, I think, at least four weeks on this project. Now it's finally done and it feels good to have this complete. And I'd say overall it was definitely worth the work and the money. Um, I probably spent about maybe a little over 2000 for everything. And if you're just doing the garden space, maybe half that cost, because half the cost probably went into the swales and the trees. But um, overall, it was not very complex to do. Um, 
it's very basic concepts as far as how to do everything and how it works and mostly it's just a matter of physical labor a lot of digging as far as the swales go a lot of resource moving as far as well both the garden and the swales moving your compost moving your mulch or wood chips and uh, yeah it's mostly just a matter of labor nothing really very complex and then of course the uh, fencing put those fence posts in string up your wire and your lines all pretty easy stuff to do it's just a matter of time and effort um, so yeah this is the first garden I've ever put together so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and uh, really excited to see how it uh, how things grow in it this spring and summer and future years so I'll be keeping you guys up to date on the progress of the garden and the swales the food forest uh, this year and in the following years to come because this is a long-term thing but uh, yeah if you're thinking of doing the garden definitely go for it it really doesn't have to cost that much money and um, you're gonna save a lot of money too in the long run by growing some of your own food I'm hoping to grow as much produce and uh, at least apples as uh, you know to provide for myself for food so I can save on money and all that um, so I'm really excited about all this but uh, yeah definitely try out the swales too if you're interested or uh, just making a food forest in general you can look up more about that on uh, well on YouTube here just look up permaculture food forests so that's about it glad to have this done and I'll be ready to move on to the next project here at the land pretty soon. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Um, I'm gonna start growing, planting stuff in my garden. Um, I think I'm in growing zone 7A. Um, so I need a little more clarification on when to plant things still. If anybody knows the best start date for my planting zone, just leave it down in a comment below. I'd appreciate that. Um, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that too. That helps boost my videos in the YouTube and Google algorithm. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed and hit the notification bell. And um, if you like, especially subscribe if you like the thought of building your own home or cob home or earthen home because that's really my specialty and that's what most of my videos are about and uh, I'll talk to you all soon thanks for watching